um i guess if you told me this two years ago i've been like wow but now i'm like <laughs> i understand that as yeah that sounds about right um especially considering um the pathways that black men are given into education. If a black man is able to make it all the way to college, they're usually told that they should go into some kind of career that will get them more money, um, especially if they're coming from a lower income background. And I was told that as well, which makes sense. If you grew up not having a lot of money, you'd rather do that um, or even go into a STEM field, which is also very good for you. But there's very few black men who are encouraged to be educators. And it's also because they never saw a black man teach. So why would they think that they could teach as well? So I think the percentage is low, mainly because of the lack of visibility of black male teachers for younger people who could be thinking about it. And I also think it's just because teaching is not seen as a respected profession by a lot of other fields. And so maybe if you're in college or if you're talking to people in other fields, they wouldn't say, oh, you should go and be a teacher. Even though you might be a great public speaker, you might be a great person to get other people to listen to you, you might be really interested in a subject, people will take those traits, but they won't say you can be a good teacher with that. They'll say you could be a good politician with that you could be a good scientist with that and you could be those things too but you could also be a great teacher and sometimes there are people who do both but usually that percentage comes about because black people aren't told that they can be a teacher in that way and i would see someone that didn't look like me and while i knew they had all this knowledge and they were sharing it with me if i had something about my personal life that made it hard for me to focus that day i didn't trust that they would understand exactly why it was making me making it hard for me to focus i remember when i was in middle school i had a band teacher and i had a uncle who'd recently passed away and it was related to something that was like a pretty common like disease or issue that happens in the black community um and and I did not know how to express that grief to this teacher. And I instead uh, like expressed my anger, or my frustrations to the teacher. And it's hard to do that and then not get in trouble, even though you're not a bad person, you didn't do anything wrong, but there's something particular to your situation that this teacher wouldn't understand. And I see that happen to a lot of my fellow students when I was in middle school and high school. And that sometimes leads to even the separation of kids where some kids are marked bad and some kids are marked good. And because I just didn't outwardly express my frustrations as much as other kids, they kind of marked me as good. And that ends up just changing the entire trajectory of where you're gonna go in school after that. Oh, you can take education classes and then you'll have a better idea of how you are even learning in the first place. Like how does your mind work? How are you a good learner? What ways would you prefer learning? And once I understood that, I could sit in a classroom for a totally different class that wasn't even about education and be like, I know how you're being a good or bad professor right now because I know exactly the theories and all the ideas that are necessary to like assess you. And I think if you teach black men or black people in general how to assess education, then they'll see how important it is and want to go into that field or go into something similar. But the reality of it today is that there's a lot more kids in schools who look a certain way and a lot less people in their school systems teaching them who don't look that or who don't who look the same way. And so when you have that mismatch, it's still pretty unfortunate for those students, especially if they're doing really well and they want to feel like if I do really well, I can be in this position. Like it just outside of teaching, there's so many positions where you still don't see a lot of black people. And it's really discouraging when you might be either not likely to go into that or you be like, oh, am I going to be the first one to do this? That's cool, but also where are the people to help me out if I get there? First put them in urban schools and where there are more black students, then put them everywhere else, because I think it's just good to have people of color in any school system to expose different types of kids who might not even interact with people of color, like in rural areas, but also to just have a diversity of thoughts and a diversity of opinions inside the school system to help make sure everyone's learning new things that they may not be exposed to beforehand. Another big reason is just like people dropping out of school and black boys not being supported in school earlier enough and being told that they do have the skills to teach. I think even if you start in kindergarten and if you see a black boy and you see him like bossing around other kids, it's one thing to say like, oh, this kid is bossy. It's another thing to say like, oh, this kid likes talking to other people and telling them stuff that they can do or teaching them stuff. You can take different pathways. And I think it starts early on when you discourage a kid or not from becoming a teacher or from even continuing their education. I don't know how big the jump will be, um, especially with how much funding goes into education. It's just not seen as like the best place for a lot of lower income black people at least to go into as a job. So you might see another like 30% increase, but what does that 30% look like in reality? It might be like 10% of black men are teachers instead of the seven now. So you'd want to hope for, I don't know, 50. <laughs> That's what I'd hope maybe. <laughs> Yeah, so I, I've definitely been affected by the lack of the black teachers in my school system, which was weird because 
growing up in West Haven, West Haven and New Haven are oddly very diverse areas. I think there was a news article last year or two years ago that said that New Haven is like the most representative city of the entirety of America in terms of diversity. And so when you have that, and then you don't have a teacher population that reflects that, you feel it. Even if I didn't have the words in elementary and middle school, I knew that like this white woman does not look like anyone in my home or my apartments. And thus, what do I, like, I don't know if I, if what she's teaching me translates to what I do here. And I just separated my world so much because I did not see anyone that looks like me in school. And then I saw a lot of people who didn't look like my teachers at home. And so these always felt way too separate. And I think it took me a while to be like, oh, is it always going to be this separate? Do I just have to accept this? And that's something that some students develop and understand, but I don't want that to be every student's like understanding of what school and education versus home is. I want them to kind of feel like it's all their community. Like your teacher could also be in the same apartment complex as you, or the white teacher that's at your school could also like come by your neighborhood at any point. But just that level of integration was not something I saw. And it made it a lot tougher for me to really get adjusted to myself or even understand myself as a black person inside of the school system. Most white parents probably do not, or probably do not recognize the importance of the diversity. So I think if you presented it to them, which is kind of annoying, you have to present it to them for them to know, but if you did, they'd be like, oh, that is important. Like my kids should be exposed to that. I think it's harder to get it in their heads that it's good for the black kid to also be exposed to it. And so I kind of get into different levels of criticizing it. It's like, it's great. I presented it to a white family. They're happy they're white kids in this school. Did Would they have cared about this if this was a 99% black school? Or do they care about it because it's just their kid? And I think the biggest issues that maybe a lot of conservative circles now are looking at are income affirmative action. A lot of times when they say get away with race, increase income affirmative action, that is to include white populations. So if you think of that, most poor people still happen to be black. And so if you want to go at it from that angle, let's try to help low income black communities go into education as well. Not only are there a lot of jobs open in that realm, but it helps increase that diversity without talking about the race. But the biggest issue is how do you make sure you're helping move this forward for a particular group or race without making it explicitly about that race? And that knowledge comes from the fact that people did not know what black schools looked like. Once we integrated, we integrated into white schools. We didn't really integrate into black schools, even though those were very good models for education. So when people were going into that, they saw mostly white women in those schools. Those were mostly the people assumed as educators on the norm in America, despite the fact that most black schools had a lot of black men, like very prominent black men. W.E.B. Du Bois was a school teacher at some point in his life. And a lot of members of the Harlem Renaissance were actually school teachers at some point, too. So it wasn't just like anyone who was on the street who maybe just got a high school education. It was people who got college and graduate school educations who were doing this, but people don't recognize that. And I think it's because we took all the attention away from black schools. So while I value Brown versus Board of Ed as a case that happened, the process of integration took away so much agency or control from black communities that just sh threw a shadow over their abilities, threw a shadow over the fact that they were educating spaces in the first place. Yeah, I think on the national level, this is a pretty hard project to try to continue or start, but I think I've seen it succeed more on a local level. And I think smaller programs, like there's one in Pittsburgh where they tried something called the Heinz Fellowship, and they paid particularly for four or five black men who went to a local university to become educators, and they gave them a year of practicing in the school and being assistant teachers. I think those programs work on a local level if you have local college students go into schools like ESUMS or something else. Um, but on the national level, you're you're not going to get enough of the Congress's support, I feel, or you're going to get just a lot of talking back with no action being done. I think the best way to not threaten the people who are currently working in these populations are help them understand the skills that they have and how they can be mentors to a next generation of educators in their communities. I think if you have like a group of white women who are out of school, I think they would be excited about the fact that there are black men who look like the kids that they work with who are interested in coming along. If an assistant teacher at first and mentoring them until there's a role in the school or in a school down the street. But I think once you give them that mentorship role, they also feel like, oh, I helped a person move forward. Besides the fact that I already teach these kids, I've helped someone in my field and I've helped someone kind of 
put more respect and put more bodies into this field. And that just means we all move forward together. I think if you make it a movement that they can be a part of because they share that profession, that it makes it more likely that they're not going to feel threatened. So it's not so much a move out of the way so all the black men can be here, but more so can you add space or can you like guide them together? And by the time, you know, 40, 50 years from now, there's going to be educators there that you supported. And there's going to be a group of black men, white women, Hispanic women, Hispanic men, all these people who are kind of guided by these same ideals of work for an urban community as opposed to we shifted everybody out because they were doing things wrong you weren't doing things wrong we just want to increase the representation that's in the room because most black men as disciplinarians and not as educators at all they'd be the security guards sometimes we had police officers who were stationed in the school and be at least one black man was there as well and i think besides the fact that they're pushed into those jobs even outside of schools was the issue with oh, we see these black kids bodies as possibly violent or possibly like erratic. And we need other strong black people's bodies to control them or stop them. And that's an issue that I've seen that I don't think it derives from the black community. I think it derives from larger school systems, which are mostly controlled by an ideology by from white people is that black people are dangerous in some way. But because of that danger that they have in them, they could also stop other black people. And I think that's an issue that I've seen go about. It's also this idea of being very paternalistic or like believing that black men are in control of the entire black family. And so they have to go and control their children, even when they're not their actual children. And it's it's not the best way of going about things. Um, and it also means that the person who's putting the hand down on these black kids are people that look like them. So add on to the fact that I don't see any of them teaching me, I now don't even even know if I can trust a black man because they're the one who's always going to yell at me. For me, when I was considering my jobs after graduating, is that I had an opportunity to work as a teacher, but the school I would have want, went, the school that I would have gone to was a no excuses school. So that meant that I would have been a teacher, but there's a lot of rules that meant I would have had to take a kid out of class or yell at them or send them to the office, which meant that they saw a black body sending them to somewhere where they would be disciplined. That means they saw me bringing them closer and closer to being dropped out or going to prison or doing something worse. Worse, and that was on me. And so what does that what does that mean for impacting that group of people when they can't even trust people who look like them, where you've taken away the ability for them to like feel communal in that space? And so I think it's really dark and insidious how that happens in the school system. Like, I won't know exactly what it's like for a kid who lives in Brooklyn, what that life is like, but I know what it looks like for me to be walking down the street black, and that's enough. And I think if you get administrations to get that, then they'll see, okay, we can't just act like these people are criminals. We can't just act like these people aren't good educators. They're actually going to be great educators. And even the mere presence of them will have a positive impact on our school system, on our grades, on our test scores, on everything. We could take very nice diversity pictures if we want to, like all of these things that a lot of schools want to care about outside of the regular education of stuff. Um, I even think about when I was thinking about further going into education, there's a very small chance I'll be trusted to be an elementary school teacher. Like that's something I've seen with black men where they're not trusted with younger children, men in general, but especially black men, because they're seen as rougher or un incapable of doing these kind of softer ways of doing education. And that's a big problem because there are so many black men that love working with children and they're very fun and playful. Most of the black men I know are very goofy people and could probably do well as even like an art teacher or something like that. So it's it's just it's really frustrating that there's so much of a stereotype attached that I can't even enter a building without people looking at me funny. Like I have a 10 year old younger sister who when I would go to her elementary school for concerts, I would be looked at funny. And it's weird because I went to this elementary school. Like some of you people saw me when I was a child and thought I was cute. And once I got to age 13, you thought I was a monster. And that's just a very frustrating thing to see translate when you want to go into a job where you could be helping kids.